Well, I'm really excited because I get to show you the party piece of this van, and that is the washroom. So let's take a look. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> right, get out. Well, hi there, welcome back to A Bus and Beyond. And in today's video, we are checking out the awesome Naus Toravan 500 MQ. Let's take a look. The Toravan comes really nicely spec to standard. It's 150 horsepower with a DSG gearbox, which makes it really, really lovely to drive. You know, it's like a car to drive, which is great. Finished in Ascot Grey. And the awesome thing is, check this out. The rest of it is also finished in Ascot Grey as well. So they've painted the whole lot. Really like that. That's really neat. Obviously, driver's door at the front there. This is a coach built motorhome essentially um, which is quite unusual you don't usually see a transporter based motorhome i love this style of van ever since i've seen sort of the t4s and t25 style um, vans that have the big motorhome coach built bit on the back and then i've seen them at shows where they've been lowered with big wheels i love that style it's so unique and really really cool Anyway, let's keep looking at the van. This is the entrance to the habitation area. So that's the habitation door just there, which we'll have a look at in a minute. You've got a little awning light just above the top there, which obviously complements the big awning, huge awning. Look how high up it is. Loads higher than on a California or anything like that. Massive legs on, on it. Uh, so that's really cool. You've got a window just here, which does open and then another window higher up at the back here as well. Got a couple of lockers at the back here. First one is for your gas bottle. And then this one is an enormous garage. Absolutely huge. I should mention the wheels, they're 17 inch Devonport wheels and they're essentially the standard wheels that you'd find on a California. Let's move around the back. Hopefully you can make it out in this glorious sunshine that we've got here in January. You've got obviously a huge rear end to the, um, the Naus Tora van. It doesn't open or anything like that. It is just a big flat side. And you'll see why when we get inside. There is a reversing camera, which makes it much easier to park. And then you've got like a carbon fiber effect Naus logo up at the top there as well. Feels such good quality. <laughs> Some motorhomes, when you tap them, you can feel just like MDF. It just feels really cheap. That is good. Good job I didn't break it. That'd be pretty bad. At the back, got another door to access the garage, which I should mention as well, does have a couple of things. One is uh, an external shower point. You've got rails along the floor with lashing points so you can tie down bikes and things like that. And then you've also got the winder for the awning. Nice, a good size garage to fit bikes in, especially on a van, like I say, of this size. That's the outlet for the boiler. So it's obviously Truma boiler. You have the cassette point for the toilet. So it's a cassette toilet inside. And then I thought this one was quite interesting. This is another locker, uh, not for storage, but as I open this, you've got your water filler point. So this is for your fresh water. Uh, you've got an open and closed drains that are both really easy to access for both your fresh water and your gray water. So you can just turn them. And then you've also got your electric point, which is fed up through the bottom there. So that when you're on site, you can just shut this no one can steal your electric. You can't unplug it or anything like that. So that, that's quite nicely done. I like that. 
but just having access to the taps with the grain fresh water is really nice actually just not having to reach underneath the van to to um, let the water out it's good everything feels such good quality you've got another couple of windows as well again both opening windows you've got one up the side there one here and then this again sort of carbon fiber effect decal all up the side with the now branding it's it's really nicely integrated i like the way the van blends into the coach built uh, portion of it it's good right oh check out these mirrors as well look at them they're on extra arms because obviously the van's a bit wider they're like truck mirrors i like that they're actually made of metal as well right but the bit that we all want to see let's take a look inside well, it is my pleasure to show you the inside of this awesome van. Firstly, though, before I take you in, let's have a look at this door because it's got some really cool features. So first off, you have screens on the window. You also have these very good little hooks for putting your coat up and that kind of thing. But my favourite bit, little umbrella holder, because as we all well know in British weather, it's very unpredictable. So having an umbrella is a real win. Also, there's this bag and we're we're in debates as to what it's actually for. I think it's probably for your shoes. Sean thinks it's a shopping bag, but you know, now shopping bag, what do you think? Maybe my new handbag? Very designer. Come with me, let's go inside. Now you can all come with me, but the bugs can't. Because look. So this is the T6.1 variant of the VW vans here. The front of it is obviously T6.1 and then they've built the rest of the van around it. So when you're looking at driving the van, it is exactly as you would expect your standard T6.1. You've got your DSG gearbox, you've got things like adaptive cruise control, you've got heated seats, you've got the Apple CarPlay, Android version of that. There's also a navigational system, but obviously you can use your Apple CarPlay for that if you want to as well. So the van is exactly as you would expect your VW. So obviously that's brilliant because we've always found that to be such a great van. Moving forward from that, you've got captain's chairs that swivel around, obviously face the seating area in here. Now above you, in a normal T6.1, it would stop here, but obviously you've got this enormous new space that they've created where they've cut out the roof of the van and then built the rest of the motorhome section of the van. So you've got loads of shelves here. You've also got plenty of storage space on the side, but most importantly, I think, is you've got an enormous window above you that also has a blackout blind on it and fly screens and it opens too. So you'll notice on one of the shelves here, you've got this blind here. Now, VW don't allow other companies to have the blinds that they put on, say like the California variants. So for the front window, you have this blind here that you, I think it's magnets that you put on the side because there's these bars that they've put along the side. So you just magnetically attach it to the front and then you've got the side windows covered as well with a similar sort of magnet system yeah, you've got loads of these storage things that's quite nice that it's rubbery actually because it means that things aren't going to just fall off onto you because it actually does stick there cupboard space at the side there's even more little cubby space at the top there but this window i just love So also hidden in this space is a three pin plug, which is quite nice. Obviously you can charge things. Now I expect that three pin plug is partly there because on other variants of this, you can actually have a drop down bed above here. Now that can come in a twin or a single variant. However, I do think it would take away because it pushes up into the roof. It certainly would take up a lot of head space here and you, you lose this window as well. And I imagine you would lose a lot of the storage space to the side. Now above the seating area where you have your dinners and things like that and chill out, there is also a huge storage area here. Nice bit of lighting underneath as well. That looks very pretty. So obviously one of the most important areas is where you're going to be chilling out, spending your time eating, that kind of thing. Now there is an enormous table here. There's four seat belted seats in this fan. So the two at the back are obviously seat belted seats as well. 
Now this is where you would eat your dinner as well. It's not the easiest to get into. It is a little more cramped in here. Now this table does actually move a little bit further away. Oh, that's a bit easier to get in there. Um, but the weirdest part is, as you're trying to get into this seat here, there's something on the floor that raises up. So you've got this random little hole essentially where your feet can go and that's about it. So it's not the most comfy seat this one, but for little kids, I mean, they're not gonna care, are they? But yeah, it's a, it's a big size table and it does expand even more. Oh, there you go. That's an absolutely massive table. So there's loads of space for you and if you have kids coming with you to sit and eat. Bear in mind though that it's four seat belted seats but this particular one is actually a two berth. So the table is currently in the higher position. You can actually lower it. There is another rail there. So I presume that you can move the cushions around to make this into sort of more of a bed area. Now I don't think these particular cushions are perfect for it. I think there are some aftermarket cushions that do a better job of making this into sort of more of a bed space. So that's something to consider, but I certainly think that if you wanted this to be a four berth, you'd be looking at having the twin bunk that comes down from the ceiling above here. The window at the side does open and also it has blinds that haven't been used yet. Ugh, there we go. They do get better with time. So that's blackout blind and then also above it you've got fly screens again it's also got these little frilly bits just to make it look a bit nicer then if you look above me there's a rather huge tv screen there now that actually is connected to a really beasty satellite system on the roof so kids will be certainly entertained or certainly grandkids this might be something that a couple of retired adults would love and they might occasionally have the grandkids over and they can't be bothered to deal with them so they put them in front of the tv it's a very good tv for that around the door is where your control panels are and switches and things like that so you've got the switches here for your step I thought you were still on. <laughs> I thought you would do that, it was going to fall off. Then you've also got like the outdoor lights, the ones above the table, you can control them all from here. Then also above me, you've got the control panel for checking your water, your um, wastewater tanks, battery power, all of those sorts of things are controlled from here and you can see the different levels. So your heating comes from a Truma diesel heater. Now that covers both your hot and cold water, obviously only your hot water, um, but also the heating inside the van, which is blown air. So that comes from the diesel, which puts a question mark above your head really, because you're thinking, what's the gas for? So the gas is actually for the kitchen, which we're gonna have a look at now. Considering the size of this van, it actually comes with an enormous fridge. So that is actually on the end of the kitchen here. Look at the size of that one. Now it has got a freezer compartment at the top. So you can put your pizzas and your ice cubes in there and then plenty of room for you in the rest of it. So if this was to be used as a four berth, you have plenty of space there for all of your food. Then you look at the worktop area. There is space here for working away. There's also a Dometic sink and gas unit now when you have the tops down obviously you have this as more prep space you can open them individually which i like to see because then obviously you can shut one and still use it as other prep space it's a dual gas burner so there's two gas burners in here one slightly bigger than the other one as you would expect and it's got automatic igniter oh it does actually come off i like that as well it's got rubber seals around it so this doesn't make any rattling noise at all that's really good. One thing I can't stand is rattly vans. So on the other side, you've got quite a good sized sink actually too. This obviously comes up and it's got hot and cold water and a tiny little plug. Above the kitchen area, you've got another window. That's another opening window. That's always helpful for right by kitchen because obviously you can let all the smells out. Then you've also got fly screens and blackout blinds. You've got a lovely big light above the kitchen area here plus two three pin plugs so you can plug your kettle into this area if the wire is long enough above it you've got 
lots of storage. It's quite nice to see that one side has no shelf in it, so you can put your cereals and things like that in there. The other side, you've got lips to prevent things from falling out. Then you've got shelves so that you can keep all your tins and that kind of thing in the top there too. There's even more three pin plugs. We've just spotted one there too. And then also you've got access to the lighting system here again. I suspect that's partly so that you can have it near the bedroom, although the bedroom has its own one. So they just throw them everywhere. That's really good though. Yeah, that is really good because the electronics to be able to do that from three different points must be pretty impressive, as we well know from building our own van. But it's really handy to see lighting points in so many areas because there's nothing more frustrating than getting into bed and then realising you haven't turned a light off. So if there's lots of places that you can turn all of the lights on and off, then that's really handy to see that they're everywhere. It's nice that they thought of that. Right, as for storage underneath the kitchen, the top drawer is an unusual one because it does look like it should be enormous. However, you've still got the kitchen sink and the hob unit above it. So it's not actually nearly as deep as it looks like it will be. You've got places for cutlery in there. Um, you've also got the shower lining. I presume that's for the one that's in the garage area at the back then the drawers do actually get a lot bigger, thankfully. So you've got fitted sheets here for the three different mattress toppers that you've got for the bed at the back. And they fit nicely in there, although you could put that anywhere. Oh, and then this one isn't a drawer. It's just a flip down cupboard. Half of it is blocked and then the other half is just above where the wheel is. So that's actually not nearly as big as it looks like it should be. So minimal storage, but if there's only two of you, there's plenty for you. Um, then you've got the storage units at the top as well. So yeah, you're okay really. Now the reason that that half of that drop down cupboard at the bottom is covered is actually the fridge. Now the fridge compressor isn't built into where the fridge area goes so that you have more space actually in the fridge. It actually comes out of the bottom there. So that's why it's been boxed in at the back. That's where the compressor of the fridge goes. So that's why it's been blocked. But it is a shame to lose that storage space, especially since if there's only two people, I don't know if you would need a fridge quite that big. But, and we know this about the fridges because when we were having a look at fridges to use in our own van, we saw one like this uh, and realized that the compressor was a separate unit. So that's how we know. Well, I'm really excited because I get to show you the party piece of this van and that is the washroom. So let's take a look. <laughs> take a look in there. It doesn't look that special at first. You've got, starting from the top, you've got a vent, so you can open that um, to get some ventilation here when you're using the toilet, having a shower, whatever. You've got a few storage uh, shelves there. You've got three storage shelves up at the side there. There's also more storage inside there behind the mirror. Again, more of those uh, points to turn all the lights off inside the van. You've got a decent sized sink and also obviously a metal tap, which is quite nice to see. And then underneath, there's the cassette toilet. Now, obviously, you can see a shower tray there, which you cannot access yet, but we'll have a look at that in a minute. If you wanted to use the toilet, obviously the sink is in the way at the minute, but all you have to do is lift that up. I'll try to do this one handed for you. Start it sliding. There you go. That slides that out of the way so you can actually use the toilet. The sink is all hidden away. But then what if you want to use the shower? Let's take a look at that. So put the sink back out. And then this is the real neat trick. The next thing you need to do is move this cushion. That's out of the way. And then with this handle, pull up. And up it goes. Then look at the size of that. Look at the size of that shower. That is enormous. And it 
all just locks away by turning this. And that then locks the shower in place. So that is huge. That makes such a difference. What a big shower compartment for a van of this size. Very, very clever. And then let's see what it looks like in the bed area. You now have this big unit here. So you could still use this if you're on your own. If there's just one person, you could sleep there uh, with the shower in place. But obviously, if there's two of you, you can't. You need to put that back down again. But at least you can still use the toilet with the shower uh, in like the half position, closed down. Uh, you can still go to the toilet at night time and things like that. To stop everything getting wet, you've got a couple of shower doors. You've got one up here, look. I don't actually know how to get out. It's like origami. <laughs> I do worry, actually, about that when you're driving along. I don't think you can get a much bigger shower compartment in a van of this size. That's quite impressive. Right, so onto the bedroom area. You sleep width ways across the van. You've got a skylight above, which is nice. Again, with fly screen, blackout blinds, and it does open as well. Uh, yeah, so you've got three covers that are all the same size. Then you've got a shelf underneath with a three pin plug. How many three pin plugs are in this van? There must be, there's about eight three pin plugs in this van. <laughs> That's unbelievable. And again, you've got the same setup here. Uh, for controlling all the lights again. So there's four different points where you can control all the lights in the van. That's quite clever. I like that. But yeah, you sleep with ways. You've got windows either side that do open and it's a decent sized bed actually. That's pretty big. And that's all because you have, because it's a coach built van, it's much wider than the standard T6.1. So that's great. You've also got um, a reading light over on that side. Uh, and then, yeah, just more lighting. The, the lighting's really nice in this van. You've got a lot of different mood lighting, uh, reading lights and all that kind of stuff. So you've got loads of different options for lighting. There's also a light under here, but I don't know how that one turns on. Oh, like that. <laughs> so yeah, there's tons of lights. And yeah, all underneath there. That's nice, I like that. Yeah, another reading, another reading light there as well. And these also have um, USB points in them as well, so you can charge off that. There's a USB point there as well. There's tons of USB points and sockets. There's also another shelf just at the top there, which um, is nicely lit so you can find stuff in there. But yeah, impressive. Underneath the bed, you do have some more storage. Quite a big cupboard, actually. So it's got shelving on one side, two shelves, and then, yeah, a hanging rail in the middle there. And what's down here? Let's have a look what's down here. Oh, access to the boiler. Mm. And then just ahead of that cupboard, there is also a drop down step which um yeah that's something that i think now are going to look at altering because it's a bit too flimsy you can't really use that to climb up right well there we have it that is a tour of the naus vantora 500 mq and if um if you're also interested in the lt variant which is over there Stay tuned because there's a video coming very soon. Depending on when you're watching this video, it might already be live on our channel. So if it is, click on the link in the description below. But yeah, what did you think to this? So it's 84 
$1,363, pounds, which is very similar to something like a VW California, but you're getting a lot more space. It's a it's one of those vans that is genuinely a tourer. Like it's, you're obviously not gonna use it as a car. You're genuinely using this as a motorhome essentially. So for, for what it is, I think it's brilliant. I think it's a really clever use of space. The only things I'm not a massive fan of are the floor. I don't really understand the, why the floor needs so many different levels in it. That's quite annoying. I think I'd probably end up tripping over quite a bit at first before I got used to it. But other than that, I mean, that, that bathroom, once they sort the Velcro bit out on that yeah. wall, it's brilliant. I also think, um, obviously, a lot of people justify the cost of a California or a... Um, a Westphalia variant, you know, that kind of, or a, a nugget, that kind of thing. People justify that by the fact that they can use it as an everyday vehicle as well. Size-wise, yes, you could use this as an everyday vehicle. Do you think you would use it as an everyday no, vehicle? I, don't I, think, I think it is still pretty firmly a, a motorhome, so, but you could use it as an everyday vehicle if you wanted to. The thing is, like, driving something like this, because it's a T6.1, it's going to be lovely to drive. So you can do lots and lots of miles in this very comfortably, I think. Yeah. And you can live in it really comfortably when you're away. So I do think if, if you're after something that is small, but you can still do a lot of traveling in, this is spot on for that. Definitely, yeah. Let us know in the comments below what you think. Would you pick this over a California, over a Ford Nugget? Or are you interested in the other variant? Yeah, in the LT. Now that may well be the better option. We're gonna have a look at it and uh, discuss that. Yes. That'll be in the next video. So thank you very much for watching. Please do subscribe. It really helps the channel out, brings us loads more things like this for you in the future. Um, but yeah, let us know in the comments, give it a like, let us know what you think. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Cheers.